When I first heard about this story, I was shocked that no one's reporting on this other than the Driven in Australia. This is an amazing achievement. Three megawatt charging completely changes the game when it comes to trucking, commercial, mining, everything you can think of that is big and has a massive battery pack. And the thing is, this three megawatt charger actually apparently works and could be used potentially by many different types of vehicles, buses, trucks, mining machinery. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. What's going on here? Well, I'm going to tell you what's going on here because my mind is blown. I mean, Tesla are talking about one megawatt charging for the Tesla Semi. That's awesome. But what about tripling that? What about three megawatt charging? Well, apparently it's here. Ford Askew has rolled out three megawatt fast chargers as it trials huge electric and hydrogen haul trucks. Now I should point out that a number of global mining companies have decided within the last month, they've trialed hydrogen and electric trucks and they've decided to go with electric trucks or electric machinery. I mean, I don't know if you even call these things trucks, they're so massive, they're enormous. Iron ore and green energy giant Fortescue Metals says it is rolling out its first prototype three megawatt fast charger as it continues trials of its first electric heavy haulage truck, dubbed the Road Runner, at one of its giant Pilbara mines. Mark Hutchinson, the head of Fortescue Energy, says the company's green fleet team is now testing a 240 ton, as in the weight of about 120 Ford Rangers, that was developed with Lieber, which uses a 1.4 megawatt hour mega battery, which itself weighs 15 tons. And then it's been developed by Fortescue's Williams Advanced Engineering Team. So Williams, of course, had a Formula One team for a long time, many years, racing company, a lot of really advanced technology at Williams. Hutchinson revealed, says, the driven.io that the company is commissioning a prototype three megawatt fast charger to recharge their trucks, which is operating at the Christmas Creek mine that is partly powered by a nearby 60 megawatt solar farm. You can imagine if these work as they're expected to, they will be deployed in mines and agriculture and trucking all over the world. This would be an utter game changer. I'm so excited because three megawatts, imagine the charging speed. This is just insane. We're on track to begin testing the fast charger on site this quarter, said Hutchinson to analysts and media. This will help us to understand and develop whole truck duty and charging cycles. To have developed and gotten ready and delivered technology of this scale for on-site testing is a huge feat. This is really exciting progress. There's no question he's right here. No hyperbole needed, no marketing here. This is really true. The Driven says that to put the size of these electric trucks, batteries, and fast chargers into perspective, electric passenger cars have weights of one to two tons. They feature batteries that range from 40 kilowatt hours to 120 kilowatt hours in capacity. But for example, a Tesla Model 3 has about a 60 kilowatt hour size battery. They generally plug into chargers that range from a charging speed of around 40 kilowatts to 350 kilowatt. But it's rare that the EVs that say they'll charge at 350 kilowatt actually do. And when they do, it's only for maybe a couple of minutes at best. Fortescue is also testing the first of its hydrogen fuel cell trucks at the mine, which fits into its massive global plans to sell green hydrogen, become one of the world's biggest producers of green hydrogen, basically like the new Shell ExxonMobil, but for green products, like a new fossil fuel in a way. But but even they seem to be admitting here that it won't be able to compete with battery electric trucks at mine sites, which are simply a better economic pr proposition. We are putting both technologies on site this calendar year so we can figure out the round trip efficiency and use those insights to make final decision what our fleet will be in the future, says Christian Haining, the head of decarbonization. But he's gonna have a really tough time convincing Twiggy Forrest, who basically owns Fortescue, that uh, the EV trucks are better than the hydrogen ones. I mean, that's what other mines, other 
mining companies have admitted to. So I'd be surprised if privately he doesn't think that's the case, but publicly he might have to say otherwise, because of course, if you're planning to commercialize massive green hydrogen production, you want to promote it as much as you possibly can, right? Now, I could be wrong. Maybe he will be completely objective in his decision-making on whether or not to go with these electric trucks or whether to go hydrogen. Mining companies such as BHP and Rio have already said that battery electric trucks beat hydrogen on costs. However, trials will continue as the world watches how the costs in battery and electrolyzer and fuel cell technologies develop in coming years. Now, I should point out, a lot of people think fuel cell technologies, hydrogen-powered cars are some new thing, and new technology is going to come along and just transform hydrogen-powered vehicles. It's going to be incredible. Uh, all we need is more investment, but actually, it's not really true. Hydrogen-powered vehicles have been under development now for more than 30 years. Hutchinson says Fortescue is continuing its research and development into battery electric vehicles and the batteries themselves at WAE including trains such as the so-called Infinity Train that is hoping to deploy at its Pilbara mines. Electric trains are clearly another interesting development for the future. The train is based on the idea that a fully laden train going downhill from the mines to the port will simply charge the batteries through regeneration or regen braking enough to take the empty trains back to the mine, meaning it will cost nothing to transport whatever you're mining, whatever you're digging up from the mine all the way to the port and then to send it back. I mean, how cool is that? That is mind blowing. I'm excited by that idea. But it's also trialing a dual fuel train that uses green ammonia, mainly for other customers that may not have the advantage of the height difference between the mine and the port to make the Infinity Trains concept actually work. Now, this is genius. If you think about it, usually a mine will be higher than the ocean. So the ability to have an electric train would make a lot of sense if it has regen braking. The future of electric vehicles is just utterly insane. Three megawatt charging today. What are we going to be at by 2040? Five, six, 10 megawatt charging? Imagine how fast an electric car could charge in 50 years. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, the future, my friends, is going to blow your mind. Mine, yours, everyone's. Just imagine what our kids will be driving in 20 or 30 years. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.